Hey everyone, this is uh, my ram pump story. What we've got here is one of our trial and errors. Your typical everyday ram pump you see on YouTube and every Google image. Just about the beginner's version. Now I'm going to bring you over here to my water source. So what I have is just a run-of-the-mill natural drain creek. Um, the water fluctuates quite a bit throughout the year. Um, we, when we get heavy rains, I mean, where I'm standing right now, we'll be covered in water. So I used to have a bridge coming right across from that maple tree over to this little new guy right here. Um, I noticed earlier in the year that we were getting a lot of um, wood rot over on that side. And so I decided to rip the bridge out. Note these pictures that are coming up right here. That was a little bit of fun, not gonna lie. Uh, then I decided if I'm gonna rebuild the bridge, I didn't wanna make it with a center post in there because that's where I was getting a lot of water movement and which was creating some erosion down here and kind of where that shovel is back there actually it took everything out and it was all gone so what I was trying to do is I had a dirt bridge right here with some culverts and I was trying to figure out a good place to put them to incorporate my ram pump uh, this ended up being a little bit too far from the original creek bed and it was just turning to mush and it was just going to be too much water I was damming up at the point in time. So kind of like what I was telling you guys about the cinder blocks, I got off a neighbor of mine. He is uh, really nice and sold them to me for 50 cents a block. You know, all I had to do was lift them up, carry them out, which I got no problem breaking a sweat. Um... So I dug out this whole area right here. I mean, it literally used to come to in between that single block and that broken piece of concrete right there. Um, dug this all out, put a nice retaining wall in here. And I graded the retaining wall down, got a little angle on it right here. That way, when the water starts coming over, it's got a little bit more guidance to it. So. Then when I finish this up, this whole area is going to be a bowl. So that way it kind of guides the water back down into that channel. And then to kind of hold a little bit more of the water, once we dry up here, I'm going to finish by adding a wall in there. But to get back to the point, um, with all of this, the reason why I'm doing this bowl and this little pond area right here is so I can have a little bit more pressure for my ram pump because <clears throat> obviously that's what they work off of now I am not in a situation where I have a whole heck of a lot of fall so I pretty much created my own fall and then I have an 8 inch culvert underneath the dirt here and that culvert you will see the one that's covered up right there by that cinder block because I'm going to do some work for you guys so I want to drain the tube. It actually sits lower than these other two 10 inchers. So on a normal three quarters of the year, that eight incher will actually drain and pretty much keep up with most of this creek. Uh, then I got these two for when it gets a little wet. And then as you can see, I got a slope designed over it so it'll just kick right up over and go back over on that side and we don't have to worry about anything. Um, so that eight inch one that's sitting right there is actually sitting um, about a few inches lower than these two tens. That way it's taking most of the water pressure. And with all of this water back here, I'm pretty much creating the pressure for fall. Um, eight inch tube comes out over here. I took and made my own little connector, which I got uncovered right now for you guys. And then took an extra piece of eight, made a 90, screwed and glued, 
and then I have my four inch pipe for my ram pump delivery pipe that goes all the way down there so more water more volume more impact so that's pretty much what we're going for because like I said nine times out of ten they tell you you need uh, 1.3 meters of fall at minimum to make a two inch ram pump work well I've got like a foot of fall total and then when I did the excavation work I've got maybe maybe a foot and a half two feet if I'm if I'm lucky so the more water we get down this pipe right here to help create that force for the door of the ram pump to open and close then we're pretty much recreating what a two inch or one inch ram pump delivery pipe system will do at 100 yards so pretty much i've got one two three four 40 feet of four inch and then i've got 10, 11 or 12 feet of eight inch sitting under there so in total somewhere between 50 55 feet of pipe um and a whole heck of a lot of water coming through it all right i'm gonna carefully get down in here so i can bring you guys over so this is the the ram pump site oh sorry guys So here's this bad boy. She's definitely made to take some water and she's definitely taking a beating. We've had quite a lot of rain in the last two weeks and I mean, she just sat here, got a couple stakes in the ground, that's about it. Um, I went with the, the flap door style. That way it's easier to adjust the weights and I'm sure as heck not gonna buy a four inch um, check valve assembly or foot valve regardless they're insanely priced so broke out the grinder and the welder and made a door and i actually found i have this um foam matting in here it absorbs a lot of the noise from the bang of the door being slammed shut uh i i have a little bit of property but i still have neighbors and you know you obviously don't want to disturb them I ended up going with a two inch check valve because I blew through um, two one and a quarters. Just they were slamming so much I snapped the stems and then um, broke the brass guard in the center that the alignment bar. And then I broke this stem which you can't see because of the light so we'll take that apart later. They actually ended up having to weld together uh, a dowel and some washers to the the piece of brass that sits as the foot to close the check valve to kind of reinforce it and she's been going pretty good so far but then as you guys noticed here's the big tank i think it's 30 gallon 25 30 gallon propane tank that i have my fittings sitting on here this is for the check valve side exit side water reservoir and then we've got the the air tank that sits on the end of it to maintain the constant pressure so what i'm going to do is i'm going to reset up my delivery valve because she moved a little bit if you guys can see how it kind of it's got the snake effect going on there you always want to keep these as straight as humanly possible um and obviously always on a downward slope so I'm going to straighten these up and then get right back to you guys. All right, we're back. Got everything buttoned back up, tied together, screwed together, whole nine, straightened up. Tried to level the pipe out a little bit. Um, it's so mucky. It's just kind of floating everywhere. We might have to get back to that when it, the water cools off a little bit. Um, so here we go. We're going to let her free. Ooh. Getting rid of some of that air. And here we go. Sorry, forgot to put my grate back. 
Got to keep the little critters out. I've already caught like four or five crayfish and a few sucker fish with this darn thing stuck in the door and stuck in the check valve. But um, so there we go. We got our full flow of water. You can see the air bubbles popping up right over here on this side. Uh, that's just air coming out of that tube. So now we're going to walk back all the way down to that end and close that door. That way we can force the rest of that air out this way and all the water back in that way. Excuse my movement. All right, so here we go. Our door is closed. And our valve is closed. That way we fill up this tank and we pressurize this tank. So here we go. Look at all that water. Boom. Here, and we're gonna start set, resetting the system. Oh, she's almost there. She wanted to go. We're just going to motivate it a little bit faster. I'm an impatient person. I don't know about you guys. Hear that check valve? It's the sound of progress. Me personally, I'm not one that likes repetitive clicks and bangs, but when I hear this, it just makes me feel all warm and fuzzy inside because it's something doing it. It's working 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Alright, so we're going to make an adjustment on this door because I'm thinking because the water flow is kind of hit or miss. Or something's out of whack here. So I'm going to make it so this weight is leaning more in that way. So that way it kind of helps force that door open. So we'll get back to you in just a second. 